Hello, my name is Amanda Carlson. I am editor of The Welder Magazine, and today I'm speaking with Ray Ripple. Ray was a contestant with uh, the Netflix show Metal Shop Masters, and this is one part of a series of inter interviews that we are doing with the contestants. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, please make sure to check out our other videos on Instagram and YouTube, and also make sure to check out The Welder Magazine. Thank you. I'm excited to hear about your experience on the show. Um, so for those who aren't aware, you and I talked at length in uh, like the spring of 2020 before this whole COVID thing took over. Um, and we wrote an article about you that was on the cover of the Welder Magazine. That really goes into a lot of detail about your background, your childhood, um, your journey to becoming a welder. Um, so I would encourage anybody uh, watching this to go back to thefabricator.com and read the article about you just to get a sense of, of who you are and how you got to this point. Uh, but I do want to know, um, just for everybody watching here, when did you know that welding and metal art was like it for you, was your thing? Uh, well, uh, I like I said, I fell into welding and fabricating by complete accident. And so um, I think it was like, it was that day that like my truck broke down and I had to replace the entire steering column and I didn't have all the tools to do it. So I went to my friend's shop to replace it because he had all the tools and he was fabricating on a, a roll cage and on this race truck that they were building. And I asked him if I could try it. And he was like, so have you ever done it before? And I was like, all the time. Cause you know, I watched like a thousand YouTube videos. So I was basically an expert at this point. And so once he let me try it, I was just, I was addicted. Like there was no going back at that point. Like I was addicted to the smells, the heat, the burn, it all. And it just, and now I'm here. Yeah. So what, what did you make when you first started uh, the metal art career? I know I'm personally, I'm aware of the, uh, was it the oxygen, oxygen tanks from uh, the fire departments, right? You would cut those in, uh, make like decorative designs out of that. So I actually was doing stuff way before that. So mm -hmm. like I, uh, when I first started like in the fabrication world, I guess not fabricating world, but in the metal art world, where I was creating these cool abstract 2D pieces with um, like galvanized sheet metal, like old barn tin. I would paint it, I would cut it with tin snips and rivet it all together and like all of this really cool stuff. And so it create these cool like metal paintings basically. And it wasn't until that day that, you know, I went to go fix my truck that I ever picked up anything with fabricating at all. The very first thing I ever fabricated, believe it or not, was a set of wings. And they were probably like this big. They weren't that big, they were awful. 100% awful. Like I have a picture of them. I'll have to send you a picture of it just so you can see what I'm talking about. But uh, they were not, good at all and a lot of my early fabrication work wasn't good at all but practice makes perfect and I was determined to express myself and my art that way and so um, I just kept at it until I was able to save up enough money for a plasma cutter and then save up enough money for a welder and just keep after it so the the uh, the fire extinguishers didn't come until way later I'd already been like fabricating for quite some time before mm -hmm. the fire extinguishers the fire extinguishers also came by accident because I was in the fire academy and we took a um a safety course on like fire extinguishers breaking them down the chemicals like how to put them back together basically everything you need to know about a fire extinguisher was in that class in the fire academy and I didn't pay attention to anything anybody <laughs> said I just wanted to know what they were made out of and what I could make out of them and so I finally got my hands on um, a couple of condemned ones and that's kind of how that happened. Mm -hmm. So after we published the article about you in uh, early 2020, what was some of the responses that you got on social media from the article? Uh, I had a lot of, a lot of females that reached out to me that were thinking about getting into fabricating or into the welding world and they've been scared and lost and they're also all kind of broken like me just wanting to find a way to be a voice for themselves and for their story and for their life and when um it came out 
which is so crazy. It's so weird to me when people are like, oh my gosh, you give us, you give me hope or inspiration. And half the time, I don't even feel like I'm an inspiration to myself. So like, it's, it's still very awkward for me when people tell me that kind of stuff. But, um, I like when it came out, like, I was just hoping that my story would help connect with women that have been in the same situation with me or resonate with anybody really Mm -hmm. that have come out of the same situations I have. So, um, I think I did that and I really hope that it continues to keep doing that, but just women taking a stand for themselves after reading that and like learning and taking their lives into their own hands to be who they want to be after reading it. That right there is, I don't know. It's it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's just all crazy. It doesn't, (laughs) I don't know. And that is crazy. I don't take compliments very well either. So, (laughs) well, obviously it resonated with other people too, uh, and you know, particularly producers of this show. Um, How did the producers of Metal Shot Masters? uh, How did they find you? How did they reach out to you? When did they reach out to you? And what did you think when you got these messages or emails from these people where you're like? What? <laughs> oh my God. I thought it was a scam. I thought it was a scam. I literally, I got these emails and they were like, Hey, we would love for you. We're like, it's you for the show. Da, 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 da. It's for Netflix. And I was like, whatever, Like that like never happens. Right. And so I just ignored them for a while. And then finally one day they were like, Hey, we're, you know, checking back in to see if you're interested. And so I finally emailed them back and I was like, yeah, I'm interested. I'd like to know more information. Just kind of like, I had no expectations. I was just like, okay, whatever. More information, please. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. And when they emailed me back, I was like, oh my God, this is real. Like, this is like legitimate. Like, this is real. And so uh, I went to uh, like how it went from the emails to like casting and Zoom meetings and all of this happened before the pandemic. And then everything just stopped when the pandemic happened the entire world had stopped everything stopped so casting like i think we did everything we were supposed to do before the pandemic and then when the world shut down i guess production and everything else shut down so we didn't even know really if we made the show or what exactly was going on because everybody was kind of scattered the world was shut down you know all that kind of stuff so it wasn't until like august i believe of last year that they were like hey we love you. You made the show. Also, you got to make an avatar. Also, you were going to leave. You're going to leave like right after that. <laughs> so it was like very, very fast. Like it was super fast whenever I responded to the email and then it just stopped. And then it was super fast again, as soon as I guess production picked back up and they were like, Hey, you made the show. So it moved very, very quickly. Yeah. Very, very quickly. Can you tell us a little bit about the casting process, what you had to do, the questions that they asked you, did you have to make anything for this? Like for the, for the casting process? Uh, no, they, it was more, we had to like show our work and like, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So like, of course we got to send lots of videos and pictures and things like that. But I think a lot of the casting too, and just my assumption, I could be completely wrong, but a lot of, I feel like when they picked us, they had already done their research prior. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, cause it, it makes sense. Like you're not just going to go find some random person and be like, Hey, are you into metal art? Can you build this also for a television show? So I feel like they did their research because um, when they asked questions, they knew about like what I had been doing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know how that works really behind the scenes. It's just what they did. Yeah. Did they ever tell you how they found you? Was it through Instagram? Was it through articles? Was it did they ever tell you like, no. hey, we, we saw you on this or we saw you doing this or we saw this post or? No, actually it's kind of, a no, really. I feel like it could be Instagram, but I feel like it could be like a little bit of everywhere. Cause mm-hmm. like, I'm kind of everywhere, not like just in one spot. So I think, I don't know, I'm hoping everywhere. Like I'm yeah. hoping all over the place and I hope I continue to be all over the place. So um, what did they tell you about the premise of the show? Uh, that it was going to be a metal art fabrication show where basically we were going to be challenged to build different pieces of art in, uh, like just a spectrum of a couple hours or something like that. So I kind of knew a little bit of just how it was like, it's a lot like 
not a lot like it's definitely way different of a show than like forged in fire or blown away or whatever but it's kind of the same concept in a way so that's just kind of how they explained it and so mm -hmm. i just ran with it okay uh how long did filming take place because we see the uh, finished product, but we don't necessarily understand how long of a process the filming of the, you know, the, whole, the show takes place, how long an episode takes to film. I mean, those things are just yeah. like, you know, un unbeknownst to all of the, all of us viewers. So I don't want to give away TV secrets, but <laughs> uh, as far as like, it took roughly, um, I think at the end of the day, cause I made it to the semifinals. So uh, filming for me, I think it was like almost a month. I think total maybe it was a, a month or maybe a little over a month. I'm not exactly sure because I just made it to the semifinals. And then, of course, like Ivan and Tom went to the last episode. So I'm sure it was just a couple more days of filming after that. But um, it took it was I was gone for about a month. So mm -hmm. it was it was in a it wasn't like a just a week process or like film for a couple of days. And that was it. Like it was. It was a grueling month of being away from my family and time changes because the time change in Texas versus California is two hour difference. And so by the time that I was getting up, the kids were already at school. And like by the time that we were getting home back to the hotel, my kids were already asleep. So like there was a lot of times where I didn't even get to talk to them because of the time difference. And then, of course, being gone for about a month you know, was hard on them, too. So, yeah, that month, it seems like a long time at the time but realistically if you think about it it's really not that long of a time for a full series you know yeah yeah but you guys must have been really busy in that in that oh month, yeah every frame. day every day every day from sun up to sundown we were out there mm -mm -mm. so i have not seen the show yet uh since it dropped right before fab tech my life has been a little chaotic i know you haven't seen i haven't it? had time to binge anything <laughs> anything I'm dying here but my life's gonna slow down here really quick so that's one of the things I'm gonna watch is Metal Shot Masters my question to you is was it a different project each episode or was it one project spanning the entire show so it was a different project each episode and uh so it was a different challenge each episode so like the first challenge we had to build something that represented who we were as artists, as a whole, as a person, um, an avatar, basically, that when somebody looks at it, it re they're like, oh, dang, that is definitely Ray, you know, that kind of thing. And then we had to build a barbecue grill, which I actually wasn't even that thrilled about it. I got me and Tom were partners on that. And uh, Tom is great. I absolutely love that dude to death. Uh, he's basically like my brother from another mother type thing. And so which were very vastly different on art styles too, which is kind of funny because it's very precision, mathematical. Everything has to line up and I'm just like, let's just cut it and see what happens, like that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, so we had to do the grill and the grill, the only reason why I was against the grill is because I live in Texas. So I know if I build one grill, I'm gonna have to build everybody grills <laughs> and I can't do that, you know? And then, um, then we had, uh, what was it after the grill? I think it was the shadow one was the last episode. So after the grill, it was the mobile sculpture. Oh yeah, it was the mobile. So we had to build a mobile. And then after the mobile was the shadow sculpture. So even in the mobile, like we had, they gave us three different materials to use on the mobile. And one of them was horseshoes. And also I'm in Texas. And so <laughs> if I build a horseshoe art for one person, I'm gonna have to build a horseshoe art for everybody. And so uh, that was a, a, another thing. So they were all like 10, I think we got 10 hours for each one of them. I can't remember, it's kind of a blur now because we filmed this like a year ago, but yeah. uh, there was 10 hours per per episode, basically per bill. So it was very challenging. I let I will say that I was in my comfort zone when I went to the show. And when I got on the show, it was like basically like an artist boot camp. Like it kicked my ass. Like I it made me like dig deep in my art realm of world inside my brain. And I have to like really bring some stuff out, which is kind of cool because after the show was over, um, like it really changed my artwork for the better, I feel mm -hmm. like, so. What elements were so challenging to you? Was it different materials? Was it different processes? Was it just 
having to be creative and execute technically in such a small window of time, like what was, what pushed you? Um, so the challenge, the challenges weren't easy by any means. Every challenge was uh, difficult in its own way uh, with everything. The, I think out of even just the equipment, I use this equipment a lot. So I'm familiar with all this stuff that was in the shop, that kind of stuff. The um, shadow sculpture, which is the one that I got eliminated on in the semifinals. That one was probably the most challenging of all of it. And it's because I did opposite of what everybody else did. So we were supposed to paint with shadow and said I painted with light because my brain, I'm dyslexic. So everything with my brain basically works fast backwards. And so that whole challenge for me was just naturally backwards for me and I couldn't pull it out in the other way. So I actually restarted that that particular sculpture like twice in my 10 hours and oh. completed the sculpture in two hours. Like it was crazy. Oh, so oh. I think out of everything on the show, all the equipment, everything we used, everything I created, so on and so forth, that was probably the hardest. Mm -hmm. Talk about the relationships that you formed with the other contestants and then with the judges as well. I know, um, obviously you're aware, uh, Stephanie Hoffman and David Madero were at FabTech and they talked a lot about the show and their time as judges and their experiences. And one theme kept coming up was just the fact that like, it just felt like a family, even like yeah. with the pandemic kind of trying, you know, keeping people somewhat separate. Um, she, she and David mentioned like, they're like super close now. They, you know, text at least once a day. I don't know if you got that same sense with the contestants um, as you guys are kind of going through this crazy experience together. Well, if you watch a lot of competition shows, it's very cutthroat. You know what I mean? Um, everybody is against each other. Everybody's all for themselves. You know, all of that kind of stuff. But I think Netflix didn't expect, uh, like, what the way that we all kind of just, like, fell in love with each other. You know what I mean? Like, because we're all, not only are we all welders, blue-collar workers, we're all artists. So we're all very emotional human beings. And on top of that, too, like, we all do this for a living. This is our jobs. Like this isn't just something we do on the side for fun. Like these are, these are our jobs. And so, you know, being on a show and it being cutthroat could potentially affect our business. You know what I mean? Like it could be like, I, if I could trash somebody on the, on the show for television and then how does that make me look as a businesswoman or like as a partner or as a, you know what I mean? So like, I think we all took really in, took that into consideration is that, you know, it's very important to us to take care of each other because we're all in this together. We're all doing this at the same time. Nobody really knows what to expect. Realistically, all we have is to lean on each other because all of us are from different parts of the United States. We're gone away from home and our families for a long time, you know, and on top of that, the stress levels of, um, this stuff coming out is like, is pretty detrimental. I mean, I think I lost like 10 pounds on the show. Like it was that, it was like that stressful. So it was very important to all of us to like take care, take care of each other and love each other and support each other and all of that kind of stuff. And, but even the judges too, which I'm kind of like, I don't know why they never showed that, but like David and Stephanie were great. They were great. It doesn't show in the show. Like, and I know like they're getting a lot of backlash for like being these mean, grueling judges, but it doesn't show a lot of the times, like when I was struggling, you know, Joe Coy, David, or Stephanie walking up and being like, Ray, like, what's going on? Like, come on, dude, like, you're killing this. Like, let's do this. Like, you got it. Like, get your ass up. Like, keep going. Like, they did that with everybody. They mm -hmm. were picking everybody up. Like, every time we started to feel down, they were up and like, they were you know, like trying to push us along to get us to keep going. Because honestly, like without them doing that, it could have been a whole lot harder. They could have been really cutthroat too. Granted, it shows on the show, it seems like they're cutthroat, but they're really not. Like, yeah, they were very supportive. They, I mean, it, there was even one point where uh, Stephanie, like it doesn't even show all the challenge wins either. Cause like we, there was challenge wins for each one. And Stephanie actually helped me and Lou on one of the projects and for some reason it didn't make the cut but like that's how 
close we all were even in like holding and like waiting to be judged like all of that kind of stuff we all were just like cutting it up and like talking and laughing and like talking you know stories and fabricating stuff it's just you know um like we i think it just blue collar mixed with some artists like that's gonna be the ticket to everything's gonna be gravy <laughs> yeah yeah so i know you said earlier that you don't want to give away any tv secrets but what what did it feel like having these cameras in your face while you're trying to like technically execute something was there ever a time where they said hey do you think you could move this way so we can get this shot or hey do you think you could do that again i'm i'm just wondering i mean because they have a show to make and they want to get the best possible shots that they can um <clears throat> did that ever affect you artistically or technically did that ever just interfere with your process yeah so it's actually kind of kind of a, that's a funny question so like at one point like on the mobile episode i'm uh discussing what the mobile means right and uh so josh this is when the show just came out and so like josh and i my husband we were watching it and so during the mobile episode they pulled me away for an interview like i hate the only thing I hated was like, I'd be like in the rhythm of things and they'd be like, hey, Ray, come on, you gotta take an interview now. And I'm like, really? Like, I'm like, I'm so close. Like, I'm so close to getting this done and you wanna do an interview now? So, uh, well, that one was a particular occasion was they pulled me away from the mobile to do an interview to describe what the mobile meant. And the mobile meant uh, I struggle with depression a lot and anxiety and so the mobile represented how uh my depression affects my life in a way and so it's represents like that school of people that are constantly around you and you're just you feel like you're the big fish and everybody sees you and but they don't really see you and so they're swimming around you know you're basically mixed in with all these like people just constantly swimming so that's kind of like what it meant and i was describing it on the show in an interview and Josh kind of starts laughing a little bit. And I was like, what's so funny? Like, I'm talking about depression. This isn't funny. And he just starts laughing. He was like, when you did that interview, you were hungry, weren't you? And I was like, how would you know that? <laughs> like, how did you know that of all things that I was hungry during that interview? So there was a lot of times where I was like, man, like, can we just get the show on the road? Like, can we get all these questions done? I got to get back to work. I'm hungry. I got to pee. Like, you know, all of the things. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of frustrating in some points. And because you just kind of want to get things done and you're in a rhythm and you're moving. And so, yeah, but like even even some of the questions too, like they would ask, they would ask us the same question like over and over again. And I would get frustrated. I'm like, I'm not changing my answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, they have a show to make, but I'm basically a character all in itself already. So <laughs> <laughs> it kind of worked out, I guess, on my behalf. <laughs> what has the response been to you and maybe even to other to others um, since the show has been out? Oh, man. I don't know. It's like goes back to that, like really awkward. I get compliments and I don't know how to respond to them. So I'm just like, happy birthday. And they're like, it's not my birthday. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't know what to do with my hands. Like, um, like just the, the fact that like people that have come from situations that I've come from and they like feel like there's a little bit of hope that they can like make it to or they can do anything that they set their mind in whether it be a metal fabricating or painting or whatever it is that they're doing that they know that their past can't define doesn't define them and they don't have to be a product of their environment that they can rise above and instead of being a victim you can be a voice and so that is what I, I hope everybody took from that too. And also like took the fact that I'm not a classically trained anything, you know what I mean? And so I taught myself how to do everything and that people can literally teach themselves how to do whatever it is their heart desires to do and that they love to do. And so that's what I hope people took from it. I feel like people did, but also I'm very awkward at like trying to like, like, oh, I love, I love what I did there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, 
you know. Yeah. What happened to all of the things that you made? Did you get to bring them home or did the show keep them? Are they on, this, on display somewhere? I, the show kept them. Okay. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I heard something about auctioning off. I know the grill ended up with a producer that me and Tom made. So um, I think it, I'm not really exactly sure, but they're all owned by Netflix because they're all pieces that we mm -hmm. created for Netflix. So I'm not even really sure what they're going to do with them. I really wish we could have kept the hoods. We didn't get to keep our hoods that had our names on them. That was okay. the only thing that we all were like, can we keep our hoods? And they were like, no, we got to do more shots with them. And so we didn't get to keep our hoods, which was kind of sad. But um, we all like kind of kept little memorabilia things from the show. Like I kept one of the spoons from that, um, from the horseshoe spoon and razor blade episode, the mm -hmm. mobile episode. I kept a spoon and I'm getting a ring made out of it. And there's like a couple of other things like sketches and like just cool stuff that we got to keep from the show. Um, so we did get to keep like our welding jackets that I only wore for 15 minutes on the first episode. And then <laughs> like, you know, little things like that. So yeah, we got to keep some stuff, but not the sculptures. Those had to go. Yeah. Yeah. What are you working on now? What, I mean, how, how do you follow that up? And are you getting requests for collaborations or for more um, custom work? I, you know, what are you doing right now? So I'm actually building a dinosaur. The vertebrae is on the ground right here. Uh, so that's my next build that I'm working on right now. I just finished uh, a bunny for the Specs liquor stores. In, in Texas, Specs liquor stores is like basically the Bucky's of Tex Texas or whatever, the for liquor stores. And so I just created a, a, a monument for them that sits out Friday, outside of their home store, like their number one store. And then this, but um, man, the things that I'm doing next year, I, I can't really talk about some of them because uh, they're like still in the works, but the opportunities that the show has given me, not just on a work level, but on a professional level and TV world level and just everything level, big things are gonna happen next year. So we'll just know that big things are happening next year. Very cool. Well, you sent me, I think that same message right before uh, the show, well, it was a few months before the show aired, before anybody knew this was happening. I think you and I were messaging back and forth on Instagram, you asked for some copies of the magazine. And I think yep. you said something like, you know, big things are happening. And I was like, oh, and then, we heard about the show and then so the show awesome. came out yeah it's awesome that i'm awesome. also i also am a i'm a very i'm a closet i'm a closet doer like i don't really like to tell people what i'm doing when i'm doing them because mm -hmm. i've spent my entire life people telling me i'm not good enough or i'll never make it or you know you should stop or that's not going to work out or why would you even try? Like I've spent my whole life like that. And so I like to just wow people. I'm a wow factor person. Um, hence my like craziness and wildness and a very feral person basically. But um, I like people to see something I'm doing. I'm like, damn, that's what she's been doing this whole time. Like <laughs> I like that reaction. So i have like a lot of the things that I do, I don't like to tell nobody. So that way when they come out, it's like, at that point that you can't deny it anyway you can't tell me i wasn't good enough to do it you know what i mean because they just said it there it is there it is you I know think, those kinds of things i think that's what people's reaction was when they saw the wings on display at fabtech in the hypertherm booth i mean it was just like whoa what is that and it's incredible yeah. and i saw so many people standing in front of it getting their pictures taken and it, it was incredible that was a huge that was a huge moment for me because uh like I deal with imposter syndrome a lot. Like my cat's just running around the shop. Uh, I deal with the imposter syndrome a lot. Like a lot of the times I'll create something like, for instance, like the bunny, like I worked every single day from sunup to sundown to, to create that. And whenever I, I finish it and I stand back and I look at it, sometimes I feel like I didn't even create it. It's weird. It's like a, like, or I feel like I'm not ever doing anything like, with my life. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it, but other than like, I just feel like I'm constantly in a stagnant place, which I know I'm not like, it just feels like that naturally. So like 
taking those wings to the show and like showcasing my work for at a welding convention with people who already says like say that like I'm not a real welder basically you know all of the stigmas and things that people say that I am and then taking these to that show was very nerve-wracking because I was scared that people were gonna like what if everybody hates me what if everybody hates them what if everybody judges it Sorry, that was a, a car outside outside my shop. But um, <laughs> so what if everybody hates it? What if like somebody, you know, doesn't, what if like, I like, it's weird. I almost felt like I had this fear of what if people, what if people find out I'm not this real welder? You know what I mean? Like that's kind of how it felt. So like having them there and, and showcasing literally person to person like you could see my work all day long on Instagram and the only way you're going to see it in person is if you go to the sculpture or go to the place and see it right so but this was different this was like at a welding convention with a bunch of welders who already think I'm not a welder and here I am representing it for a multi-million dollar company like it was very nerve-wracking I think I cried and quit art like at least twice <laughs> whenever I was building them uh so like that was a very, gosh, man, like just not groundbreaking moment, but like, I felt just very, I don't know. It just, the work all this time, it's just, so, it's hard to explain because like, if you, like I used to eat out of trash cans, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I used to eat out of trash cans and like run the streets and like, I'm, and I just, I made wings for a multi-million dollar company that went to a welding convention to help advertise myself in a show that I just came out on on Netflix. It was just, it, my head was just, it exploded. Like, I didn't know, like, it still doesn't even seem real, if that makes sense. I don't know how to describe it. I don't even know how to answer that question. No, no. I, I think you answered it perfectly. Hopefully that experience gave you validation, maybe? Yeah. That I think it, it helped a lot with the imposter syndrome. Um, it helped me at, like sometimes like every once in a while, that was one of those moments that I look back at my life and I'm like, damn, like, like I made that, like, that's so freaking cool. Like my hands did that. Like the, my hands did that out of everything that I've ever done in my life. Like I just couldn't believe that that was me. So it was, it was a very like, wow moment for myself. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add about yourself or your show or your work that I didn't ask? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Where can people find you? If they want to look at your work, if they want to follow you, where can they find you? Uh, so you can find me on Facebook. Uh, also, I just got verified on Facebook, which is so crazy. Congratulations. So uh, I'm working on Instagram next, but uh, so you can find me on Facebook. It's just my name, Ray Ripple. And then you can also find me on Instagram, just my name, Ray Ripple. Basically, you can find me anywhere by my name, <laughs> Ray Ripple, okay. which happened by complete accident, I must say. I don't really know what to think. My, my, can you imagine the next generation of usernames? Like we've basically taken all the all the good usernames. The next generation of usernames are gonna be like the wildest things on the planet. And so like when I created like Instagram and all my social media, like I didn't think about it. I just used my name. <laughs> and it just sucked. So yeah, just my name. Well, we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, looking forward to seeing what's next for you. Big thanks. Save your four. <laughs> Thank you so much. Was everything fine? I said everything fine, right? You did great. I didn't say the F word one time. You didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I you was didn't. trying so hard not to.